These numbers really don't look good, but have you seen the bottom? When can we expect a rebound? Yes, good morning. Well, I think the numbers speak for themselves. The first half was uh, very, very challenging for us in all of our markets. And if you think about how the pandemic has affected uh, our businesses throughout the, the, the globe, then uh, you can sort of see uh, how they would flow through to, to uh, so, uh, the numbers that we reported. I think very much depends on the second half in terms of the in terms of how we will we will complete the year. Um, most of our, our markets are now reopened, so that is encouraging. In fact, three of our four core markets, China, Singapore, and, and Vietnam, I, I think are in relatively good shape uh, from a pandemic perspective and how we are coping with the pandemic. And so I think we are cautiously optimistic that uh, if our malls continue to be open, we are able to continue to sell residential products and our office tenants are able to come back to work, then you know we are in position to have a better second half as opposed to the first half. Andrew, you just talked about your malls. Are you still going to invest in more physical uh, shopping malls given how the pandemic has fundamentally changed and taken a lot of things online? Is this going to affect basically your investment strategy going forward? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. It's one we addressed last year when we talked about a strategic pivot to achieve better balance. And I think as a group, we acknowledged that perhaps we were a little bit heavy on retail. So I, I believe that that, you know, that journey will continue. Uh, we do still believe that retail plays a role. It's just that, that the, 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 the product itself has to potentially evolve. Uh, and what the pandemic has done is, has likely accelerated the pace of that evolution. So we're very we're working very hard to provide a digital omni-channel platform to our tenants so that they can provide a similar type of service to to their to their to their customers and the shoppers who come to our malls. And we think that there is a there is a coexistence of online and offline that can work very very well for the right malls in the right locations. And that really underpins our retail strategy across China, Singapore, and, and other markets where we have a retail presence. Are you looking into alternative asset investments? I'm thinking likes of cloud kitchens, maybe co-working spaces that may be a better bet than traditional retail in the post-pandemic world? Absolutely. I think uh, what, the, what the pandemic has uh, taught us in no uncertain terms is that uh, everything must be re-looked at and, and uh, there are no sacred cows. So if there are alternative uses for existing assets that perhaps uh, we can look at, and you mentioned some great examples there, uh, then, uh, it, you know, we're, we're very open to taking a look at that. Uh, it's going to be different for, for each market. So something that works for, say, Malaysia may not necessarily work for us in, in Singapore and, and vice versa. So it's a case of being uh, very locally tuned to uh, what the asset may be able to provide for us, and whether it's a cloud kitchen, whether it is uh, a working environment in a mall uh, or something similar to that effect. Uh, the ability to put digital on the on the physical space. These are all uh, different ways that we can future-proof the asset and pivot the the, the, the the asset class to become more more resilient in a post-COVID environment. And we've heard that the Singapore government is increasingly concerned about the fate of developers, that they've drawn up emergency uh, assistance plans. Are you worried about the broader industry? Do you see the need potentially for government bailouts if developers run out of money? Well, let's hope we, we don't get to that stage. Uh, I think for us, we, we have to take care of ourselves. Uh, and what I'd like to be able to say, or what I'd like to say is that operationally, we have remained very resilient. We generated uh, 300 million in operating cash flow, despite uh, the challenging half that we've just been through. So that tells us that we've got a good recurring business that generates a steady income and allows us to remain cash flow positive. Second aspect to that is having a strong balance sheet that allows us to uh, be comfortable that we can navigate. We have the financial and fiscal resources to navigate through the crisis, as well as to have that dry powder that is very, very important to take advantage of any counter-cyclical opportunities that may come our way. So I very much hope we don't get to a stage where we actually have to uh, ask for help. I, I think the key here is to remain uh, self-reliant and resilient through this crisis. And thus far, I think we're in good position to do so. Talking about help, what about helping some of your tenants, the retailers that are suffering? Have you had to uh, 
put on measures to ease some of their pain and rent reductions and so forth? Uh, indeed, we have. Uh, I think we recognize that we all exist uh, symbiotically in an ecosystem and we sort of need each other to, 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 to function well and, and prosper. Uh, so hand in hand with uh, some very uh, timely and beneficial government support, we've been able to collaboratively uh, work with our tenants uh, to provide relief when it is needed. Uh, and uh, even post uh, the sort of mandated uh, relief that has been uh, set out by, by the uh, regulators, regulators and the authorities, we are working with tenants on a need, uh, on a case-by-case, as-needed basis. You know, if you're if you're a tenant and you're physically unable to open because your mall is closed, then I think that's uh, incumbent on a responsible landlord to come in and provide that help. But as I said, as we are coming out of the first half, you know, 90, 90 plus percent of our tenants are able to open across, our, say, our retail platform, and the same is true in our offices and our workspaces, logistics, industrial facilities, and so on and so forth. So the vast majority of our tenants are actually able to open and, and function. Then it's a case of you know your business model helping them with with uh, the right digital platforms, uh, get them on an omni-channel uh, platform so they can they can service their clients uh, according to the, the desired channel. And I think if you're able to do that, then we can proceed down to a much more case-by-case -case basis, rendering assistance only when it is absolutely needed. Andrew, when it comes to retail rent in Singapore, how much more pressure are you expecting for the rest of the year? Uh, it's a good question. I think uh, thus far, our uh, Singapore retail reversions have been very slightly positive. And we've been able to uh, renew a vast majority, the, the majority of our leases that have come up uh, to date. So that actually is very encouraging. And I think, again, is a byproduct of the collaborative approach that we have taken together with the government as well as our tenants. And they recognize that this is an ecosystem that is sustainable as long as we all work together and figure out a way out of, out of the pandemic. So I think, again, we're cautiously optimistic that in terms of actual rents, um, uh, I think they are they are they have a they have a good resilience to them. The structuring of the rental contract I think may may change somewhat going forward, where we participate more in a risk sharing type of model in terms of a revenue share rather than uh, relying mainly on just a base set of rents. So that is again a, a good example of how the the rental model structure may have to evolve in a post COVID environment, working collaboratively with our tenants. Andrew, how are you seeing the recovery take place in China? And given that we're getting sort of more bullish assessments of the recovery there, potentially a V-shaped rebound, would you be looking more investments across borders rather than within Singapore? Yeah, uh, China is, is, is five four in, in pandemic terms, first in, first out for us. And we're very, very encouraged by uh, where China is today across our platforms. Residential products selling very well. Our retail malls are all open. Our, again, our business spaces are all open. And they're pretty much, you know, it's between sort of 80 to 90 percent back to sort of pre-COVID in terms of occupancies and perhaps slightly lower in terms of, 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 of sales and so on and so forth. So very, very encouraging uh, uh, response from, from China. It is our core market. It is our largest market in terms of contribution. And again, gives us uh, cautious optimism that the second half will be, allow us to you know, sort of get back to a uh, continue to build on that very stable recurring income base, but allow us to then recycle capital and, as you say, be able to sort of make the right types of investments, uh, uh, recycling out of non-core uh, assets, getting assets into our REITs and our private equity funds, as well as looking to take positions in new asset classes within China, because we're very encouraged by uh, how, how she, has, she has emerged from the, from the crisis, and we really hope that it uh, continues.